Well, look at this old piece of machinery. This old, uh, what is it, New Holland four, I don't know what they are, 456, 476, something like that. It's an old uh, sickle mower. We just rebuilt the whole thing. We put all brand new bearings, rebuilt the cutter bar. Oh, uh, is this the one? Oh no, this is the spare one. We have another one identical to this, anyways. Anyways, we rebuilt the other one. This is our spare one. And <clears throat> why do we have this? Well, this thing goes in the really rough areas where you don't want to take our disc mower or a good piece of equipment. It's really maneuverable, um, low risk of breaking anything. It's pretty basic machine, but uh, these last two years, this thing cut a lot of slough areas, um, got into a lot of little areas that uh, you'd have trouble with otherwise. So it's really, it's worth its weight in gold, this old machine. So uh, we actually spent, um, what was it? Thousand bucks rebuilding that other one and it's well worth it. Um, thing cuts really good, especially when it's tuned up. You know, I wouldn't want to cut fields with this, but uh, but it does, it's, uh, it plays its role for sure in our haying operation, especially for those wetter areas. Um, dry years, it, it really pays off. So once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. But <laughs> I don't miss uh, the plugging up. I, I, you know, disc mower, you just give her, give her, right? You don't ever have to worry about stopping. So here's the new Holland uh, H6750. We had it almost from new. It's a 2014. We got it in 15, I believe. Um, something like that. Um, I'm just going to drain the uh, main box here. Going to drain that oil. It looks clean. I checked it already. It looked pretty good, but uh, still want to service it. I noticed that this right here, seal's pushing out here. I got to look into this, see what's going on here. Uh, see if that's normal. I don't think it is. It looks like it's pushed out a little bit. We'll, we'll take pressure off it and see what happens. But yeah, just going to tune this up. I'm going to check the belt. Uh, the belt looked okay, but I want to check it, see if it's kind of glazing over. That means it would slip, right? And uh, yeah, we're going to change all. These are all separate modules. <clears throat> so in between each one of these, they have their own oil baths. So I did buy New Holland oil, ridiculously priced oil, but it's good stuff. And I'm going to change all the oils in them, do the blades. I'm going to pull the turtles off and I'm going to take out any twine, anything wrapped around here. I can see there's some twine in here. So got to clean all those off and just uh, grease everything up. Um, I try to keep it greased every 40 hours or so. We did have uh, this arm, uh, believe it or not, it's a pretty heavy piece. Hit a big bump. I guess it had a fracture in it and it did uh, snap off. That was a two years ago that's about the only problem I had with this thing this thing cut a lot of hay <laughs> it's been pretty great it's been a great machine uh, New Holland makes a real good disc mower it's real heavy duty real stout machine but it's heavy um, what's the weight on this this thing weighs quite a bit um, my uh, I'm not sure exactly what the weight is but uh, it's up there um, Anyways, it, it, my 6400 is hooked up to it all summer, so it, does, it handles it no problem. Um, the baler, our John Deere uh, 566 baler goes on to our John Deere 6110 tractor. And then uh, <clears throat> the V-rake, or the straight rake, is hooked up to the um, John Deere 2755 uh, tractor. Um, V-rake we didn't even really use last year because we were raking like... 8 to 12 windrows into one just to make a proper windrow. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it was crazy. So hopefully we can get a little more use out of the V-Rake this year. But uh, yeah, let's get this done. Let's get this tuned up. I'll show you how we do it. So I'm going to tell you the one thing this machine has going against it. Any three-point machine, and I'm talking, I guess, in particular to this one, is the hooking up of the three-point. You know, lots of guys say, oh, I can hook it up right away, just super easy. I guess if you had a stand that you fabricated, yeah, you probably could. But that's the only only problem with this thing. I dread hooking it up and unhooking it. It's just silly. But uh, like, I don't know why they didn't put like four points on the machine where there's adjustable stands, like just little jacks or something. You know, make way more sense than than how they put this one stand on one side. It's all lopsided and. Just using the rear uh, three-point uh, button here. 
dropping it. It's dropping low. I don't know why. You might think that's a victory, but it's not. <laughs> well, finally got it. Then I have to tighten it up, top link, bring it in so it's not at uh, riding back like that. Now I just gotta tilt this uh, back in a little bit. So it's sitting, you can kind of tell by looking. That's probably too much. But once we. I like to have a little bit of an attack angle, but not too much. I'm not going cut today, it's just maintenance, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. This goes to put it in transport mode. You can pull that. <clears throat> that pulls this lever, which will uh, unhook you from the machine, holding it in the upright position. So, yep. So I gotta put the limiter straps on yet so it doesn't allow it to go too far down. But for right this second, I just wanna clear out all that garbage. Yeah, all right. And we're just gonna lift it a little bit just to get it to the shop. So I can start working on it. There you go. That's good enough. And I'm just going to pull all these top turtles off, clear them of any debris. I'm going to change the main uh, gearbox oil, grease everything up, change the blades. Basic maintenance, check the belt out. I might put a belt on it, I'm not sure yet. Ah. Wool. See, we'll put this one. I think we'll change that module oil first. Now, it's this big bevel, this gearbox. I just opened this, put it in transport mode, drained out all the old stuff. So I'm gonna put 1100, uh, mls of fluid in there so here we go putting 1100 mls into this main gearbox here right at the front this is an important one you want to keep this one nice and topped up i probably put about 1200 in uh there's lots of room in there so lots of room for expansion i'm not worried about putting, putting too much in there so i don't want to fool around with that as it's uh so important well <clears throat> Got the first top off, so we're gonna pull this off. I got them aligned so it's up, down, side, up, down, side. So easy to put back together. Three quarter inch, uh, four bolts there. Take them out, not a huge deal. Uh, these these units, I actually uh, always have two shock pro hubs. So if I do hit something, at least I can just uh, basically zip out these four bolts. Pull the hub out. There's a middle uh, bolt in the middle here. Pull that out, throw the new Shock Pro hub in. It takes all of probably half hour, 20 minutes uh, if you don't know what you're doing. Half hour, if, I'm sorry, 20 minutes if you know what you're doing, half hour if you don't. So you take this off and then that's the, the hub that comes off. So it's super easy. Um, new Holland was thinking when they made these, and I like, you know what? If you do have a problem with one of the modules, you could literally uh, carry on well, with exception, you can delete the one module that's not working and it should still carry on. So 
it's a good system it's a good cutter bar really solid cutter bar we got some really rocky ground here we hit a lot of objects and uh, it's not smooth by far and this thing is really held up well that's why I would consider another one of these guys um, as I, I uh, noted earlier in the comment box let me know what what do you guys uh, suggest if you know if I do start looking for a new mower I would really like a new Holland you know these guys really cut well but hey I'm open to anything you know uh, you know there's lots of lots of brands out there that are half decent so you know I would never uh... whoa look at that believe it guys believe this guys and girls this is done about well I'd like to say once every about a week and a half I uh, I pull these off and and check so this was uh, not done at the end of the year I typically would put it away so it's nice and clean, so it's just drive out ready. But um, I just didn't because we cut it so far into the season. So we were literally cutting, <laughs> snow was coming down at the end of the season. We were making some wind block bales because, well, desperate times call for desperate measures. So, yeah, like, you know, what can you do? This is that uh, slew grass, uh, the, the native grass is slew grass fields that weren't planted. So it's really stringy, twiny, and uh, not the best forage, but we made them for wind, wind block bales anyway, so they did the trick. Um, you know, cows, cows eat anything, but we're not going to feed this to the cows. But that's why this is so, you know, typically on a hay, uh, a typical hay field of ours, we're not going to have that. The twine, that's a different story. That's just an ongoing battle we always have. So, <laughs> you know how it goes, right? Down to my last two turtles there. I'm going to take the air compressor, blow these all out really nice, degrease them. And then I'm going to just uh, lift this whole thing up and uh, I'll pivot it up drain all the oil from all the modules, take the little screws out on the bottom, tilt it back down, catch the oils, then top them up, put the turtles on, good to go. Well, I got my little buddy helping me. Good job, buddy. That's what they look like when they're all clean. Now we're gonna pull the oil, check the oils in them, and uh, go from there. Yeah, so with this, I took a 15 mil, just a little uh, screw over here, right underneath the shoe there. And you'll just unscrew it, put it into this old discard pail. Take this, let it flow better. There we go. Oh yeah, you can see there, a little bit of filings. Well, this is all I put in here, is this uh, Case IH, synthetic gear lube, 70, uh, 75W90. This is really good stuff, seems to not burn up. Seems to do a good job, it's expensive enough, so. But for the mount we gotta put in here, I don't mind paying uh, for the good stuff. Cheap insurance. All right, so these little modules, they only hold 300 mLs. So yeah, definitely it's worth uh, changing it, uh, you know, at that small amount. You know, I got a five gallon pail, which is like uh, 18, almost 19 liters. So, well, that looks pretty square to me. That should work. That will work, Piggy, that will work. Yeah, there's always one smart aleck bolt that has to drop out. I don't know, maybe I should use my impact gun for this. Maybe just not give her as much jam. What do you figure? I'll hand tighten them. So home stretch. As I'm going along here, I'm making sure they have the right rotation, the right knives on them. You know, it's, it's easy. It goes uh, sideways, up and down, sideways, up and down. I'm just looking to make sure the right rotation is on the blades. So when it's sitting in there, 
We want to make sure it's going the right direction, which they all are now. Well, I know this last one's kind of a big cone-shaped guy, and it goes a little different than the rest. So I guess it throws the um, throws the hay into the middle a little bit. Imagine what that is. So it goes something like this. Like apologize if you can't see. I can barely see. You gotta have an extension. I seen my extension. And where did I put that? It's right here. Perfect. Really like this air gun, but you know what? I need a bigger tank. I don't have a big enough reservoir. Seems like it works pretty hard to keep up to this air tools. Let's get in there. Perfect. Perfecto. Perfecto Monday. And this cap goes on top. There we go. Perfect. Let's just get the curtain on. We should be in business. Should be in business, people. Ooh, yeah. <laughs>